so, so nervous about this thing. people welcome back if you're returning to my channel and if you are new welcome my name is Jen I go by the leafy geek here also on Instagram and today I want to share with you some wish listers so if you are a plant collector or even you know a plant enthusiast you probably have a wish list and those can kind of vary depending on what your tastes are, what kind of house plants you enjoy growing, uh, what you would like to try growing. A lot of that lately, and there's been some discussion in the community about it, is that there's demand, increased demand for certain plants that have kind of driven up the prices or uh, made them harder to acquire. Just, or they're just, that's just the nature of the plant. It's a difficult plant to acquire and a lot of people want it. And so there are scarcities of certain types of plants. I avoided kind of the craze with like the variegated monstera, some of the other, you know, high, um, highly sought after philodendrons. I managed to kind of avoid, you know, that whole thing uh, because I was into Hoya <laughs> or other plants. Um, that I could get. I was into Peperomia for a little while, still have some of those, but definitely, you know, I found my love with Hoya, uh, my love of houseplant centers around Hoya and um, jungle cacti. We've kind of seen a shift um, toward demand for certain types of Hoya and, well, any Hoya really. It seems like lately those are kind of the first plants to go off the shelves of our, you know, traditional and regular, uh, regularly shopped online sellers. Um, they go fast, they go first, which is great. It's a, it's a great plant. It's a great um, family of plants, but it's not so great for me because I want to find some of these, you know, <laughs> some of these harder to find Hoya. I'm a collector. I know many, many of us out there are Hoya enthusiasts. Hello, fellow Hoya heads. Wish lists stem from us seeing plants either online or in person, or friends have them, or they're trending. Wish list plants stem from that kind of disconnect between the demand and the supply. The availability of certain plants is kind of an entirely different video in and of itself. This is just meant to be kind of a lighthearted sharing with you of certain plants that were on my personal wish list that I managed to find and acquire in 2020. Basically, big global scavenger hunt for these. <laughs> um, I say global, but I really mean domestic. I, I haven't placed any um, orders outside of the US for any of my plants. You know, that is to say that the that the seller that I got them from didn't have them shipped from overseas, but my purchases have been US-based purchases. I'm also going to um, cut to a certain special unboxing at the end um, because I did receive my number one wishlist plant today. That's Friday, October 2nd. I do have quite a few to show you, so let's just get right into this. I wonder if I should go chronologically. That might be kind of fun in the order that I have gotten them. First one I'm going to show you. So this one I got way, 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 way back at the beginning of the year. I shipped or ordered plants in Minnesota winter. I'm not sure I'm going to do that this year because it was just very, very stressful. But I did get this one. I actually think it was closer to, it was technically spring, but it was still very cold. I know it got delayed at least once, which, you know, certain sellers will do that and they're nice about it. So that was the case with this one, but this is my Hoya Matilde. So this has been one that I had been looking for since I started collecting Hoyas. I think I first saw it in a Betsy Begonia video on her Hoyas. So really just loved it right away. 
and wanted to find it if possible. And believe it or not, this little Hoya <laughs> has been my number one bloomer this uh, this grow season, but also just in general. It's It's got, how many peduncles does it have on it? It's got two mature peduncles that it's bloomed off of. And then it's got two more that grew. Where's the other one? Oh, yeah, it's got two peduncles on the same vine. So we'll see how that goes. But this has just been a great little Hoya. And it's pretty low maintenance. It's uh, a cross between Carnosa and Serpents. And it grows pretty steadily. I mean, slow to add leaves. It's just been blooming a lot. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really terrific little find. I got this one from Logies, like I said, this year back in March, I believe. And I'm very, very excited that I have this one still. I've had it for several months and I am still just very, very excited to have it. So that is Hoya Matilde. Next one I'm going to show you is another Hoya. Quite a few Hoya in front of me right now. Um, but the next one I'm going to show you, I got the first plant right around the same time I got Hoya Matilde. So it was earlier in spring 2020. And this is Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. And you might remember that unboxing. Uh, I do believe this has put on some growth. Uh, I think everything forward here is about what is new. Um, I've noticed new leaves popping off on it, which is great. All through the growth season, this little guy grew pretty significantly. So really love this one. Of course, it does have this little offshoot here that was all white, and those have died off. I've noticed quite a few of those leaves have left us. Um, but overall, this vine is looking really solid. So I, of course, couldn't be content necessarily with just this one. I was for a very long time until my local garden center popped off on Instagram and said, hey, we've got these. And I went, oh, the thought of getting a full plant of Carnosa Compacta Variegata was very, very appealing to me. So I did end up picking up a full size six inch pot at Tonkadale. So that's where this one's from. And someday I might merge these two. I think there's a nice little spot right there. I could just pop in there, but I'm probably going to wait until next spring, summer, to, if I'm, if, if, if at all, to repot them together. Um, just because I really, this one is beautiful and it's doing so well. I don't want to mess with it now that we're getting into the dormant season. So this will have to do, <laughs> but it's really pretty too. There's some good vines with variegation on this one as well. So yay! Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. Next one is another Hoya. I have a feeling there's just going to be a big block of Hoya right here in this video. Um, but so this one... I'm trying not to jostle it too much because I have found that it's really not a fan of being touched or moved. I got some really great advice on this one from a viewer um, who mentioned that they really don't like to be messed with. And I, for my part, am a leaf petter, um, trying to get out of that habit, but I certainly am. Uh, so I kind of backed off of this one and just maintained its watering schedule and just left it alone. And have been rewarded with two new leaves. This is Hoya sigillatus. <laughs> Did I say that yet? Sigillatus. So this one I got as a cutting. This one came as an unrooted cutting from Coco Ranch and it was so long. It was just this big beautiful vine but I have had limited success with uh, with propagating or rooting long vines. Uh, just for whatever reason didn't work for me. Um, I tried the sphagnum moss method on it. I just kind of looped it up and put it in the sphagnum and made sure it was covered so there was humidity and good light and half the thing rotted which was really unfortunate. Um, 
then I kind of cut it apart. I cut the good parts of the vine, the pieces that were still alive, cut, don't touch, don't touch Jen, and cut those off and uh, tried the water propagation method, which did work for this one. Um, so, <laughs> and when I say it worked, it worked on this single vine. I think I had four or five cuttings that I was trying to, to root, that I was salvaging from that one big cutting, and I got one. <laughs> so this is my Hoya sigillatus. I've had it since April 2020. So it's pretty slow grower, <laughs> but I am just really happy that it's alive and that it, it has active growth on it still. So yay! Next wishlist plant that I acquired in 2020 is my Ripsalis paradoxa. And this little guy I also got from Coco Ranch, a uh, separate order from the Sigillatus. And I think I got this one, when did I get this one? Looking through my, I have a spreadsheet of all of my plants with care information, when I got them, and where they originate. <laughs> hey, I'm a nerd. I also got this in April. So it's been a pretty slow grower. I don't really know why. I probably need to change the soil out. I still have it in the original soil it came in, which I felt at the time was pretty good for a, for an epiphyte, for a jungle cactus, but it's been really slow um, to put on these little extensions. But each each of these little branches has new growth, well, with the exception of this one. I don't really know what this one's doing. It's just hanging out. But yeah, all of these tips are new. There too. So Ripsalis Paradoxa. This growth, um, I got this one because I really just enjoy the way it looks, the growth habit. Um, so I'm currently looking for one that's quite similar to this. It's Ripsalis Pentaptera. And uh, that's going to be for another video. <laughs> uh, but Paradoxa is doing quite well, and I am fortunate that I could find it. So, here's one for you. I love cast iron plants, otherwise known as Aspidistra eleator. And I have a big green one, which I love. I acquired a speckled one. Um, or a splashed one called Milky Way. That's the variety's uh, name, the cultivar's name. But I've always wanted a variegated one. And this is kind of a halfway point um, because there are other uh, varieties that are quite a bit more pronounced and dramatic in their variegation. But I did find this at my local uh, greenhouse at Tonkadale. This from what I can tell, I don't know if you can see that there is striping. There is intentional striping down the center of each of these leaves. And it's on every single leaf. And so I did a little bit of research and figured out that this one is very likely a variety called Lenin Song. So it's Aspidistra eleator Lenin Song which does have that striping down each leaf. So it's a lighter green um, kind of variegation, but it is there. And I love cast iron plants, so of course I picked it up because why wouldn't you? <laughs> but this is just a very, it's a small plant, but it's elegant and it fits in the space that I have it. And cast iron plants are just, such wonderful plants anyway because they are so low maintenance so I'm happy to have this one. Okay this one might be a little anticlimactic because it's still kind of in rehab mode. I recently got this one um, here the month of September and just the very end of September and I wasn't super impressed. Um, it's a new company that I ordered it from. I haven't I think I think maybe I've ordered once from them before, uh, but just wasn't really impressed with the packing and the state of the plant upon arrival. So I'm currently trying to kind of stabilize it so I can repot it. 
um, because the roots look for the most part okay. But I just needed to kind of give it some time to stabilize. And as you can see, this is the Dragon Jade uh, Discidia or um, Discidia num Numularia uh, variety Dragon Jade. And I'm trying to get the trying to get them detangled here so that there's the leaves aren't in the water, but the roots are in the water. It's just a, a process. So dragon jade discidia have those leaves that kind of curl under on themselves and create that scale-like effect. Um, so I have three little rooted strands of dragon jade, and it looks like there are some um, some branches happening off the end of this one, but it didn't come in the best condition, in my opinion, and it just, it's a wish list plant. I can check it off my list, but you know, if something else pops up, um, kind of a nicer specimen, I might go for it. But for now, I've got a dragon jade. Let's get back to the Hoyas. Okay, I have a few in front of me that I picked up this summer and I uh, have no regrets about any of this that I'm about to show you. So I've ordered several Hoyas through Secret Garden already. Some of them I'm not showing you today um, because while I love them, they were not on my wish list when I bought them. They were just neat and I decided in that moment that I wanted them. So that's the story there. I mean, probably every Hoya is my wish list Hoya really if we're being serious, but for the sake of this video and the sake of the wish list I had written down um, at the beginning of the year, <laughs> we'll just go with this. So I have here my Hoya Marillii which has since put on a new leaf in my care, and I think it's working on another one here. Definitely have a grow point, but this is the newest leaf, and it's cute. What I love about this one is really kind of the subtle venation. You can see it's got some really cool veining on there, the reverse veining that you kind of see with like fitchy eye and uh, some of the other kind of reversed vein <laughs> Hoya. Um, you think of like Callistophylla and Finlaysonii with their dark pronounced veins, but I enjoy this. I enjoy kind of the pinstripe veining on some of these Hoyas, so including this one. So that's Marillii. This one is my Hoya Australis Lisa. And I have a regular Australis and I love that thing. It's great, it's beautiful. It's a fast grower. It's a really, really solid grow grower. Um, Lisa's kind of been a different story, and I know that that is her reputation. It's kind of a challenging one, uh, but I'm pretty pleased with it so far. Uh, it has, you know, right away put out this leaf when it got to me, and this was like bright pink red um, just a few short weeks ago, and it definitely has some new growth points happening. There are two vines in here and there are two active growth points. I don't know if you can see right there. So Lisa's doing a pretty darn good job. This one is one that I'm pretty intrigued by and it's not going to look like much because it is quite small and it's, it really doesn't look like much. This is Hoya Loheri. Loheri. And it has these very oblong, interesting leaves, but it just has this very pronounced kind of elongated leaf that tapers to a point. And this is a really, I, from what I've seen when it's mature, it's a pretty neat vining Hoya. It'll just kind of go around a trellis, some fierce. So that's Loherai. Lo we'll call it Loherai. Very cute, and this one is actively growing too. Okay, this one, this one, this one. <laughs> okay, so this is my hundred dollar Hoya. <laughs> I know, I know, guys, it's a lot, it's a lot for not a lot. I get it, 
I just have been wanting this one for so long <laughs> and have not been able to find it anywhere and found it on Secret Gardens website and I think the price has since gone down which thanks guys <laughs> since I purchased it I purchased it at I think it was 95 and it is now I believe listed at 85 on the site um, not cheap not a cheap not a cheap way at all and it's been hanging out in my grow box since I have had it um, well, I moved it there because it was struggling quite a bit at first, so the adjustment was a little hard for it. And uh, according to Hoya expert Doug Chamberlain, uh, this is not an easy one to grow, or that has been its reputation. So put it right into the uh, into the grow box where there's humidity and direct light on it, and it has since put out this leaf and is working on its second growth right there, that node. And then there's another little grow point right there. So cautiously optimistic and protecting this thing like nobody's business. Um, but this is my Hoya elliptica. Did I forget to say that again? Elliptica, otherwise known as the tortoise shell Hoya. As you can tell by the patterning on the leaves, these are going to get quite a bit bigger. I believe the leaves, yeah, maybe like three, four inches. I'll have to double check kind of on what the ideal or normal size is for this, but it's, it's an investment and I am very much aware of that, but it is one that I can cross off my wish list. Hoya Elliptica. We're going to do a rewind because I got my number one wish list plant today. Came in the mail and I unboxed it and filmed. So let's check that out. I had some hair. Damn. Hi, guys. So, in the spirit of wish list plants. I wanted to just quickly share this one with you straight from the box because it just arrived today. Uh, I'm super nervous and super excited about this one because this has been on my wish list, on my Hoya wish list for a very, very long time. Uh, as you can tell, it's a lazy day for me today. I am in my pajamas, have my coffee here. It's kind of early. So, let's open this. I'm scared because we had kind of a cold snap here in Minnesota. Um, woke up to oh, 35 degrees this morning. It's Friday, October 2nd. And that was a surprise. Shouldn't have been, I guess. <laughs> this is Minnesota in the fall, so that's what happens. So I'm hopeful that everything is looking good in here. It was shipped and arrived on time. I was able to pick it up right when the um, mail delivery guy dropped it off. So, uh, I'm so nervous. So it is a Hoya. And in this little package wrapped up in plastic. Um, this again is from Secret Garden and I'm being very careful because there's no way I want to cause any damage to this plant. I'm so nervous. Okay, So extra layer protection with that plastic bag. And it feels like it's kind of the typical Secret Garden size. Um, starter plants, kind of usually the size. I might repot this one right away because in my experience with Secret Garden, 
it's been kind of 50 50 with the quality in terms of um, how they are where they arrive if the soil is damp um, especially when it's been this cold out here I really I think that's the way to go so oh God. it's so pretty we can see it already It's so it looks good. It looks really good. Pot's not even that cold. It's so beautiful, you guys. This is like I said, this is probably my number one number one wish list. Followed very closely by Hoya Callistophila. This is Hoya Finley Sonii. So it's got this one mature leaf, this newer leaf that is still hanging on. It looks pretty good. Oh my god. I'm relieved, but I'm still kind of cautious because I am feeling the soil here and it is pretty damp and cold. So I'm going to repot it. I love it. Leveled up. <laughs> I just, I don't, there's nothing to say. I'm just, I love it. Alright guys, that's it for me. So until next time, I hope that you are successful in your hunt for your wishlist plants. And of course, until next time, enjoy your plants.